Hello and welcome back to my channel. Last episode I showed you how I built the circuit board that I'm using to combine the four EMG sensors on the electrical side of my hand project. Today I would like to show you how I am making the small brass gears that I will be using to time the motion of the fingers. Last week when I was on vacation at UAMS doing cancer testing, I noticed that the motion of the fingers wasn't equal as they closed. The difference was related to the tension of the springs that I used to return the fingers to their extended position. The difference was most noticeable at the MCP joint of the pinky. The joint would become out of time if I quickly and repeatedly closed my hand. I tried out a bunch of different springs to change the tension, but no matter what I did, the pinky, due to the shorter geometry, wouldn't close at the same rate to the same position as the other fingers. The fix that I came up with involves using a pair of brass gears for every joint of the finger. The gears press into the 3 8 bearing bores of the finger sections. The gear also has a quarter inch bore that a smaller flange bearing presses into. This change meant that I also needed to remake the axles that hold the fingers together. Now there are really only two ways to cut gear teeth. You can either cut the gear tooth profile with a single point tool one by one as you index the gear blank on a dividing head, or you purchase and use a piece of tooling called a hob. A hob is like a tap, but for cutting the teeth on the outside of a gear. Cutting gears with a hob is quick, but the tooling cost can be considerable. Single point gear cutting, on the other hand, has relatively low tooling costs, but the process is slow and tedious. The gears have a 515 thousandths OD and 30 teeth with a 14 DP pitch. That's a lot of very small teeth to cut one at a time using the single point method. So I decided to go the route of hob cutting the gears since I need at least 24, possibly 48. Might as well call it 60 of them in total. So since I am me and I don't have a pile of hobs at my disposal, I started figuring out the geometry so that I could just build the tooling. I'm using brass for the gears so the tooling doesn't need to be super hard to cut the teeth. So I decided to use a piece of 1045 steel for the hob. I set up and single point cut the 14 DP thread profile on a piece of inch and a quarter diameter stock that I had on the shelf. Larger diameters to a point is better for hob tooling. After I got the shape of the thread looking pretty good, I put the shaft in a vise and with a cutoff wheel, cut a series of helical grooves counter to the machine thread. This acts as the gullet that actually cuts the tooth in the gear blank as the hob spins. So next I roughed out a couple gear blanks and in a V block I mounted a number two combination center drill. The same size drill that I used to poke the center hole in the blanks. Next I set up the horizontal milling machine to cut the gear teeth by raising the table through the center of the cutting tool. I cut a couple of first articles to see if the math worked out and all I ended up needing to do was walk the diameter in 20 thousandths to get the center to center distance to work out. Now that that's done and everything is proofed, we're set up to cut a pile of gears. And as soon as the bearings show up, I'll be able to set them up in the hand. Now you know the process involved in cutting gears with a hob in a horizontal mill. I hope you found this entertaining and informative. While I'm waiting for the voltage regulators and some miscellaneous parts to show up, I'm starting a new video series that will detail how to build your own prosthetic socket out of readily available materials from Home Depot or Lowe's. It should be really exciting and I hope you decide to follow it. As always, please like and subscribe, and be sure to let me know what you think in the comment section. I hope everyone is staying safe in the zombie apocalypse. Thanks for watching.